When Price's Dairy went up for sale a few years ago, residents in the Mountain View neighborhood took notice. Their homes were already surrounded by Superfund sites, a former jet engine plant, and a wastewater treatment plant. This patch of green was a place to relax. People were riding their horses and walking their dogs and visiting the wildlife that was already coming to this property. And so when the neighbors heard of this uh, possibility of the property being developed, they really came together and said, no, we don't want this. We want this to maintain as a green space and as a recreational space for us. The land was purchased with local and federal funds and designated as the Valle de Oro National Wildlife Refuge. That means the area is protected from commercial development, but the process for restoring the habitat is unique. It's really instilling this idea of community-engaged conservation, that we're not just here to say, this is how we're gonna build the wetlands, this is what we're gonna do, and then we'll open the doors to you. No, it's a full process of what do you wanna see at this property? How do you wanna be involved? How do you wanna engage in this property in the future? Jennifer Owen White has been involved in the refuge since it started. Valle de Oro is a really special kind of national wildlife refuge called an urban refuge and we're actually the first urban refuge in the southwest and the first urban refuge in the country that's being built under U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's urban standards of excellence. So we're actually a model for the rest of the country about how to connect urban audiences with the outdoors. Volunteers at the refuge have created trails in the bosque. Biologists, students, and citizen scientists now track native and invasive species to see how they react to changes in the landscape. We do have some really great wildlife out here, but we really expect that diversity to increase once we start increasing uh, the habitats out here. But as of right now, you can come out and see all different kinds of birds. Um, on the refuge and in the adjacent bosque, there's over 200 species of birds that have been recorded. One of the goals of these restoration efforts is not only to create a wildlife space that's accessible to neighbors, but a classroom for students in the greater Albuquerque area. I grew up in the South Valley, um, and my mom and my grandma are also from the South Valley. Um, so I feel like a special connection to this space. I also went to school in the South Valley, so I feel like I have a kind of a solidarity with kids in this area and providing these opportunities for just to be outside and to see the world around them. A lot of the kids that we work with have never visited the bosque or even gone to the river. It's nice to be able to provide that safe space for people to explore. And some young people are working on the refuge with various groups like Rocky Mountain Youth Corps, La Placita Youth Corps, and AmeriCorps. Our focus here at the refuge is having programs that are repeated visits that are very intimate. We get to know the kids pretty well. Our focus is mostly uh, citizen science. So we want to have kids come out to the space, um, become familiar with it, and create a really intimate connection. And in the process, learning through science and real life experiences. Staff and volunteers at the refuge and partner organizations in the community also want the environmental impacts of the refuge to go beyond its borders. They hope it will complement efforts to improve the air quality and other concerns for local families. Refuge manager Jennifer Owen White says the land will look very different when the kids visiting here now are adults. Coming this next year and for the next 5, 10, even 20 years going forward, there are going to be a lot of changes out here. We're going to be building a brand new visitor center, constructing trails, boardwalks, overlooks, wetlands, more of the bosque riparian habitat, some upland habitat like the foothills, some grasslands, and really taking what looks like a monoculture farm and diversifying it. There's still a lot of work to be done at the refuge, but lessons learned here could be shared with other communities in New Mexico and across the country. For New Mexico in Focus and Our Land, I'm Laura Paskus.